chapter 10, verses 13 to uh, 37. I'm going to read in Tamil. Yesu Pradhi Ramaga, or Manishan Erisalem, Erikoka Pogail, Kalu Kaile Agapata. Our oven, Bastangalai with the Konde, Amikaya Padithi, Kuturaga Vituponagal, Apode, Tatsela or Asarin and the Vari Vande, Amikande, Pakamai Vilagi Pona, and the Padi or Earl Laviano, and the Vedaka Vande, Amikande, Pakamai Vilagi Pona, Pin to Samarian Purban, Priyama Vergale, Amikande, Manaturiki. Hitte Vande only a Kayangari in name, Tracharasam Bate, Kayangari Kati, Auntan Suyavanathi Miri Ate Satirataka Kondapoi, Avale, Paramaritan, Maranade, Tampurapada Poda, Rundu Panate Yadate, Satirata Kaye Kodate, Ni Evade, Isarithi Kore, Adikemai Edagi. Even if I was a servitor, Nantirimi were a poor array, Unaka Tarvain and Dan. We put a year called Kalan Kugale Agapatavan. In the moon, a very level ever Pirana Irkara Unaka and the Tondigra and Dan. Other to Havan, Havan Kirakam say the money and Dan. Up for the yes, Havan in Doki, deep boy, other party say and Dan. This is the word of the Lord. Yes. Same reading, but in English. So this is Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 37. Jesus replied in the story, A Jewish man was travelling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbour to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, I'm Steve, I'm the other vicar. Um, we're not doing speeches, um, but you have to look out today, like yesterday, for onion ninjas. These are stealthy people running with cut halves of onions, and they shove it under your eyes when you're not looking, and suddenly makes you cry. Okay, they are everywhere. Just be careful. I will try and avoid them while I'm speaking. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your kindness. And thank you that you are you are resolute in leading us closer to God. Would you continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit and guide us into your truth? Amen. Okay, who knows any good jokes? <laughs> Anyone? Okay, this is the warning. You have. I'm going to give you some context about the Bible passage, talk about what's happening in the story, uh, and then I'm going to see. I'm going to ask you to tell the person next to you um, a joke. Does that have to be a good joke? So this is your cue now. Think of a joke. Okay? Are you ready? Are you panicking? That's fine. So, um, so in this passage, uh, Jesus is telling a story. Jesus did lots of storytelling. But this is in response to someone asking him a question. 
someone comes to him and says, what's the most important commandment? And God said, uh, Jesus says, uh, the Bible says, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, and love your neighbour as yourself. And this person goes, yes, but who is my neighbour? And rather than answering directly, Jesus tells a story. So Jesus is answering someone who is saying, who do I need to love? Who do I need to care for? So there's that story. Now in the story we have some characters. Uh, we have the man uh, on his way to Jericho being beaten up by bandits. And there are the people walking past. You have a priest, you have a temple assistant, and you have a Samaritan. Joy, could you just click down to the next picture? Hopefully it's a map. <coughs> Yay! So, Israel has a complicated history. Um, they've been there a long time. And what you had was, under King David, one country. The whole thing. You, they called it... Uh, so you had Israel was the northern kingdom, Judea was the southern kingdom, but they were united under David. And under David's sons, they argued, they fought, it came two different kingdoms. You had Israel in the north, Judea in the south. And then Israel was destroyed by the Assyrian Empire. And a little bit later, um, the Babylonian Empire came and destroyed Judea and Jerusalem. And they locked down Jerusalem, knocked down its walls, they destroyed the temple, and they carried uh, all, of the, uh, all of the educated people, all of the civil servants, uh, all of the MPs, um, if they had them at the time, they carried them off to Babylon. And so the people of Israel, the people following God, they were taken to another country. And they lived there for 70 years. And then they came back. Now, while they were in Babylon, the Babylonian Empire had a strategy to stop people causing trouble in the countries they had conquered. They would move people around. They would bring people from one country they had conquered and literally just drive them to the next country and say, there you go, build houses. And that way, no one speaks the same language. They follow different gods. They have different families. They can't come together and say, let's get the Babylonians, because they don't know each other. So when, they come, when uh, the people come back from Babylon, and we see in the book of Nehemiah, the book of Ezra, they come and they rebuild the walls. They rebuild Jerusalem. They begin to worship again in Judea. In the north of the country, what is Samaria on that map? That is the people who've been brought from other places and those who were never taken away. So there are Jewish people and there are lots of other people and they worship Yahweh. But they don't worship in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was destroyed for 70 years. They worship on a mountain in Samaria. And so for the, for the Jews in Judea, I was like, they're wrong. Look, look, they won't come for the events uh, at Jerusalem. They won't worship at Atom, but they have their own thing. We will not talk to them. So the Samaritans are next door neighbours, but there, is, there, are, there are always fights. Okay? So that's a potted history. So, back to the jokes. Turn to the person next to you, tell them your best joke. You have one minute, 30 seconds each. Go! <laughs> Go on, Ali, what's your best joke? <laughs> what's a joke? It's a good age. Some of the products are going to be attractive. And I'm just going to wake it up. Fine. Good. Okay, if you've not got to the punchline yet, tell them over food. Thank you. I said to Ali, what's your best joke? Oh, no. And she reminded me when we were in the uh, supermarket when we first got married, I got some milk and I went, look, pasteurised. <laughs> I thought it was funny too. <laughs> now, the reason I bring up the jokes is that when I was a child, uh, 
the jokes, the first jokes I heard was either about a chicken crossing a road, <laughs> or they were about three people. And there would be an Englishman, a Scottishman, and an Irishman. And always, the, the joke would always be the same pattern, and there would be choices, there would be, be options, what would you do? And the Englishman and Scotsman would do something that was vaguely sensible. The Scotsman, it was often there was something about money, because we had these, this standing joke about Scottish people. And then the Irishman would do something stupid, and that was the joke. It was all the way through. We had joke after joke after joke about Irish people being stupid. And it meant that, uh, for me, these were the first jokes I learned. And actually on TV, you would hear the jokes, and it was the same thing. This is what we did. Now, Joy, can I have the next? Do we have a map? another map? Perfect. So you can see, we are neighbours. And actually, if you know the history of Ireland, you know that Britain has not been good to Ireland. Um, and actually, for uh, what we had was a lot of people from Ireland come over to the UK looking for work. Um, and they were a different community, they were different people. And the way that people in Britain coped with that difference was to make jokes. But it wasn't just jokes. Do you want to have the next picture? So there were also, you know, and, you know we have talked about this with Windrush, about when you come to a place and how you are accepted. Uh, and there is one more that is the same thing. Um, do you want to go down one more picture? There you go. So this is, growing up, just jokes. These are the jokes we tell, this is what we do. Now, you will know from when we've shared our story, Ali spent her childhood in Dublin, in Ireland, and then moved, when she's at school, to England. At the point where I was making my jokes about the Englishman, the Scotsman, and the Irishman. And Ali comes to a school where everyone knows the jokes about the Englishman, the Scotsman, and the Irishman. And so, because at that stage, Ali's called Alison, as her mum still calls her now, and he's called Nossima, because that is Alison backwards. And I can do everything backwards, don't they? I, because I was asking, Alison, Ali yeah, yeah, so there were people at the school who didn't know my name was Alison. They only knew me as Nossima. And, you know, Ali was relieved when her dad got a job in Belgium when she could move to a different country to get away from that. And it's interesting for me because at the time that I was telling the jokes, they are just jokes. It doesn't matter. And actually then I've married someone who was on the other end of this. And that, that hits my heart. Now for Jesus, the people he is speaking to, there is a group of people that for his audience around Jerusalem and even up above Samaria in Galilee, the Samaritans, it's like, no, we don't talk to them. We see in John 4, Jesus goes to Samaria, goes to a village, a woman is there, and he says, oh, can I have a glass of water? It's just, you're Jewish. Why are you asking me for water? Because it was at the point there where you don't, you don't accept a cup from someone who's there. It's like, you are next door neighbours, you are close, but close enough that you see the differences so much more. And so Jesus tells this story about neighbours, and he says, so, this man's attacked, he is on the floor, he is in pain. And the priest comes. The priest crosses the road. And the people listen, like, that doesn't sound right. The priest is put, okay, that's fine. And goes, then a temple assistant comes, who is involved in the worship of God, like, oh, he crosses over and he walks past. And the listeners would be going, okay, that's, that's a bit odd still. Goes, then a Samaritan comes. And everyone's going, oh, we've had the Englishman, the Scotsman, and the Irishman. This is a joke. We have the priest, the temple assistant, and the Samaritan. And then he says, and the Samaritan bandages the man's wounds, puts him on his own donkey, takes him to the inn, gives the money, and says, if it's not enough, then I will come back and I will pay the rest. And everyone was expecting to laugh at the Samaritan, because that's what you do. These are what you tell jokes about. 
And Jesus finished the story and says, so, who was the neighbour? And they have to say, the one who shows mercy, the one who is kind. She says, you go do the same. And it's interesting that I always thought it was that we should be support, we should be helping other people. That we should go and we should look for who is in trouble, who is at the side of the road, and we should help them. No, no, no. The neighbour is the one who helps you. The one you will receive help from. And often amongst us, there are people who are not like us and we don't expect anything from them because they're different. Then we just, why would you expect them to help? Why would you expect them to be involved? Um, I mean, you know, we talk about um, if you've been in the, the north of England, the fact that you come to London and no one will talk to you and you'll say hello and no one says anything back. So if, if you're from the north, you think, oh, well, Londoners wouldn't help me. And actually, you do get examples of if you see a rare example, it gets published in the metro. Look, someone helped to pass it by. It does happen. And they usually don't. They say, this is the good Samaritan. God honours everyone. God wants to stretch our understanding of who God loves. The people Jesus is talking to, they know the law. They know the ways of God. But they are thinking, so this is what, what is God doing amongst us? And Jesus is saying, no, look what God is doing amongst those outside of you. Now, at St. James, we have worked really hard. You have worked really hard at getting to know people who are not like you. At worshipping where someone is speaking a language that, that you don't know. Do I go for the next photo? just because it's something that brings me joy. That we have the space after the service where people knit. I cannot knit. That is not my space. That is fine. But in that group, we had adults and children. We had refugees. The people from uh, Iran came to learn. People who had no English would still say, so what do I do? We'll take up needles. And so together we've made blankets, we made the post box top up. But that is about a group of people working together. Again, when I first arrived, often people would talk to me and they would say, um, oh, this and this has happened. Uh, it is the afternoon services. I presume this is someone from the morning service. And they would be summing up everyone, whether Sri Lankan or Indian or Pakistani. It was like, it's them. And over 12 years, I've seen more and more people take that journey to get to know people who worship in different languages, in different ways. To give honour to them. And that means now at St James, people come who are not um, Hindi speaking or Tamil speaking. And they can find a space here. Our Farsi speakers, they are stuck at the hotel while they wait for the government to process their applications. They have nowhere to go. But they came. We learned the Farsi song. They prayed in Farsi in our spaces time. They were baptised here. They blessed us. They fed us. They loved when they cooked for us. And now they've moved on. Because their accommodation has been given elsewhere. In Tottenham, um, in Wendover, in Harlesden. One person, Babak, is in Glasgow. <laughs> so should we not have helped them? Because they're not going to be here for the next five, ten years. Of course not. We were blessed by them. I love that when we sing God is so good, we have Bulgarian. <laughs> if I did this Good Samaritan and I said um, an English person walks past, a Tamil person walks past, and then a Bulgarian walks past, you'll go, yeah, yeah, of course a Bulgarian will help. That is what Dina is like. <laughs> but I love, we can make space for different languages, different cultures. And it is, it is our call as a church to journey towards God, welcoming anyone who comes and joins us alongside us. Now the problem is in our cultures, always there are those that other people can go, oh yeah, but not them. Everyone is looking to build walls 
Everyone is looking to say, yeah, yeah, but, but they are different. Don't trust the ones who are on universal credit. You have to be careful of the homeless because they're all, uh, they, they are begging, but they have houses somewhere else. There are all sorts of stories that go around. The Good Samaritan shows us God gives honour to the people who aren't like us so that our understanding of God can grow. Can we have one more photo, Joy? This is the last photo that I remember taking of, of St. James at the front of church. And I love that over 12 years, we've gone from worshipping separately, and you know it's so important to us that everyone worships in the language of their heart. So important. But now we see each other. We eat together. We know each other. We pray together. God gives honour to the people who are not like us the people that we would push away. And so we need to be more like Jesus and follow that call to love our neighbour. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you challenge us, that you push us to be better, and that by your Holy Spirit you strengthen us to do more than we think we can. Would you continue to help us to grow, to be more like you, more able to see you in people not like us, that we would all continue travelling together, closer to you. We pray this in your name.